Your kid's been staring at their phone for three hours straight, and you're convinced their brain is melting into digital soup. But the actual science says something way weirder is happening in there. The blue light panic that wasn't what we thought. Remember when everyone freaked out about blue light turning kids into screen zombies? Turns out we got the villain wrong. Blue light does suppress melatonin production, sure. A 2015 Harvard study showed that blue wavelengths at 460 nanometers can shift circadian rhythms by up to three hours. But here's the kicker. The sun produces 100 times more blue light than your iPhone at max brightness. Kids aren't sleep deprived because of blue light specifically. They're sleep deprived because TikTok exists at 2 a.m. and teenage brains literally cannot comprehend tomorrow's consequences. The prefrontal cortex, your brain's CEO of decision making, doesn't finish developing until age 25. Before that, it's basically an intern running a Fortune 500 company. When researchers at Stanford scanned teenage brains while they used social media, the reward centers lit up brighter than Times Square. Not because of blue light, because of dopamine. Sweet, sweet dopamine. Your brain on notifications is basically your brain on slot machines. Every ping, buzz, and red notification bubble triggers the same neural pathway as pulling a slot machine lever. The ventral tegmental area shoots dopamine to the nucleus accumbens faster than you can say, just one more scroll. A 2018 study from the University of Southern California found that teenagers receive an average dose sense Trentaset notifications per day. That's 237 tiny cocaine hits to a developing brain. But wait, it gets better. Or worse. Depends on your perspective. The teenage brain releases 30% more dopamine than adult brains in response to rewards. So that Instagram-like hits different when you're 14. Literally. Brain scans show the anterior cingulate cortex going absolutely bonkers in teens compared to adults viewing the same content. The myth of digital dementia. Smartphones are making kids dumber, scream the headlines. The data says something completely different. IQ scores have been rising globally at about three points per decade since the 1930s, a phenomenon called the Flynn effect. Even with smartphones everywhere, this trend continued until around 2018, when it plateaued. Not reversed, plateaued. What actually changes is how brains process information. Kids who grew up with smartphones show increased activity in the posterior parietal cortex during spatial navigation tasks. Translation? They're literally developing different neural highways. A 2020 study from UCL found that teenagers who use GPS navigation regularly had smaller hippocampi but enhanced activity in the caudate nucleus. They're not getting dumber. They're outsourcing different cognitive functions and specializing in others. The attention span of a goldfish thing is total BS. That famous stat about humans having shorter attention spans than goldfish? Complete garbage. Microsoft published it in 2015, citing a study that doesn't exist. Goldfish can actually maintain attention for months when trained. Meanwhile, kids binge watch entire TV seasons in one sitting. That's not a shortened attention span. That's selective attention. What smartphones actually do is increase task switching frequency. The average teenager switches between apps 37 times per hour. Their brains adapt by strengthening the frontoparietal control network, the same region that air traffic controllers have super developed. These kids aren't losing focus. They're becoming neural multitasking machines. Whether that's good or bad is a different question, but their brains are literally rewiring for rapid context switching. Gray matter, changes that sound scary but aren't. Smartphones shrink gray matter. Yes, technically true. A 2017 study from Korea University found reduced gray matter volume in the anterior cingulate cortex of smartphone-dependent teenagers. Sounds terrifying until you realize that learning to read also reduces gray matter in certain regions. So does learning to juggle, or play violin, or literally any skill acquisition. This is synaptic pruning, not brain damage. Your brain Marie Kondo's itself, keeping neural pathways that spark joy, get used frequently, and thanking the others for their service before yeeing them into the void. Smartphone use accelerates pruning in areas related to impulse control while strengthening areas related to thumb dexterity and visual processing. One researcher found that teenagers who text frequently have motor cortex representations of their thumbs that are 2.5 times larger than non-texters. They're evolving super thumbs, neurologically speaking. The social brain goes digital. Human brains evolved to handle about 150 stable social relationships, called Dunbar's number. The average teenager has 400 Instagram followers and 237 Snapchat friends. Their medial prefrontal cortex, the brain's social processor, is working overtime trying to track all these connections. Brain imaging shows something fascinating. When teenagers look at Instagram posts with lots of likes, the same neural regions activate as seeing someone smile at them in real life. The social reward is real. The oxytocin release is real, but here's where it gets weird. 
The anterior temporal sulcus, which processes social hierarchies, shows hyperactivity in heavy social media users. These kids' brains are constantly calculating social status, likes to followers ratios, and complex digital pecking orders that didn't exist 20 years ago. Why video games might be making kids smarter. Parents panicking about Fortnite might want to sit down for this one. Action video game players show enhanced activity in the dorsal anterior cingulate cortex, superior frontal sulcus, and middle frontal gyrus. In normal people words, better attention, faster decision-making, and enhanced spatial reasoning. A 2022 meta-analysis of 87 studies found that kids who played video games for three-plus hours daily scored higher on cognitive tests than non-gamers. Their reaction times were 17% faster, working memory improved by 12%. The hippocampus, your brain's GPS, was literally larger in kids who played 3D platform games. Minecraft might actually be building neural architecture, along with those pixelated castles. The phantom vibration syndrome nobody talks about. 89% of college students experience phantom vibrations, feeling their phone buzz when it hasn't. This isn't a mental health crisis, it's neuroplasticity gone rogue. The somatosensory cortex, which processes touch, literally rewires itself to interpret any sensation near your pocket as a potential notification. Your jeans rubbing against your leg? That's a text message now, according to your brain. This hypersensitivity extends beyond touch. Heavy smartphone users show increased activation in the auditory cortex when hearing notification sounds, even fake ones. Their brains are so primed for digital communication that they're hallucinating it into existence. One study played random beeps to teenagers while scanning their brains. Smartphone addicts' amygdalae lit up at any beep that vaguely resembled their notification sound, triggering fight-or-flight responses to phantom messages. Reading comprehension isn't dead, it just moved. Kids don't read anymore. Meanwhile, the average teenager reads 70,000 words per day through texts, posts, and articles. That's equivalent to a novel, every, single, day. But their brains process this text differently than previous generations process books. The visual word form area, your brain's reading center, shows different activation patterns in digital natives. They don't read linearly anymore. Eye tracking studies show they scan in an F pattern, reading the first line, skimming down, reading mid-page, then bouncing. Their brains adapted to extract maximum information from minimum effort. They're not worse readers. They're efficiency-optimized information extractors. What's actually happening inside those heads? The developing brain on smartphones isn't deteriorating. It's adapting at breakneck speed to a digital environment that changes faster than evolution ever intended. The neuroplasticity of teenagers, already cranked to 11, meets technology that hijacks reward systems designed for finding berries and making friends in tribes of 150. The real data shows brains developing different strengths and weaknesses than previous generations. Enhanced visual processing and task switching, reduced sustained focus and impulse control, larger motor thumb regions, smaller hippocampi, hyperactive social processing centers, under-stimulated patients' pathways. These kids' brains are speed-running adaptation to a world that didn't exist when their parents were born. They're not broken, they're not stupid. They're neurologically optimized for a reality where information moves at light speed and social hierarchies update every time someone posts a selfie. Whether that optimization will serve them well in adulthood or leave them refreshing their feeds in nursing homes, frantically checking for notifications from the great beyond, well, check back in 50 years when we have that data. Until then, maybe worry less about the screen time and more about the fact that your kid's thumb motor cortex could probably beat you at thumb wrestling just from pure neural dedication to the craft.